Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of project management key concepts where we're delving deeper into the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular is the critical path and float. And I've separated this into two videos outlining the critical path and then doing the forward and backward pass on the critical path method. Now all of this, it can seem a little daunting at first. That's why we've just separated it into two videos. But ultimately this one will give us a broad overview and the next one will delve into it in a little bit more detail. So what is the critical path? Well, it's the sequence of activities that make up the longest path through a project, so the longest possible path, but that determines how soon we're able to actually complete our project, so the shortest possible project duration. Now, it's the path that doesn't have any slack in it, so there's no leeway, and that's why it's the most critical path. So the critical path method is used to calculate those critical paths and the amount of free float and total float, which is the flexibility that we have in our schedule. So float being, you know, the leeway that we might have. Can we delay it by one day or two days? If there's uh, two days of f float, then yes, we can. Now let's, let's have a look at an example here. So this is, let's say we're starting our project schedule. We've got, these are the durations in the top middle of our critical path method, method and our network diagram. So as you can see, we've got uh, the durations of five days, five days, 10 days for this one, and 15 days for our last one. So, uh, and the float is described in the bottom middle here. So we've got zero days of float. So there's no leeway for this one. There's no leeway for this one, and there's no leeway for this one. So that means our critical path is A, C, and D. Now it also means, because if you noticed, we've got five days of float here, that means we could potentially delay this activity by five days. There's a little bit of leeway and we'd still be able to get the project done at the same time. That's the idea that we're looking at. So again, broadly or at a high level, float, free float, is the amount of time that a schedule activity, so a single activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of any of its future activities. Now total float or project slack is measured by the amount of time that a schedule activity can be delayed or extended without delaying the project finish date. And so zero float, as we said, uh, is shown on the critical path. So there's no leeway on that critical path and that's why it's critical. And we will delve into this in more detail, looking at the critical path method and the forward and backward pass to calculate all of these lovely values as part of your schedule model.